Hey guys, it's Lizard here, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to drag click with your Rocat Comb Pro. The Rocat Comb Pro is the most designed to be able to drag click super, super easily, and it does just that. But my job today is really just to help you get started so that you can understand the essentials and learn how to do it yourself. If you do find the video useful, please do consider subscribing. It really does help out a crazy amount, but with that being said, let's get into it. First things first, you're going to want to set your debounce time anywhere between 1 to 4 milliseconds. You can do this by downloading the Comb Pro software, which was recently released by Rocket. Once you've done this, it'll be a lot easier to double click, which in turn allows you to drag click. Now, the reason I actually bring up double clicking is because it's very important for learning how to drag click, and if you can't double click, you most probably also can't drag click. To double click, all you have to do is hang the indent underneath your knuckle over the edge of your mouse and loosely tap your finger down and click the button. This doesn't take too long to learn, and once you're able to do it, you should be able to learn drag clicking in no time. Now on the Rocket Comb Pro, there's two main ways to learn how to drag click. One is by dragging your finger without holding the mouse, and one is holding the mouse and doing longer drag clicks. I will be going over both of these different types of drag clicking, so if you're interested in that, make sure to stick around. Now to actually start drag clicking, we want to start off with the most simple way to do this, and that is without holding your mouse. All I mean by this is that you're drag clicking your finger along the mouse surface, but you're not holding the mouse with any part of your hand. This type of drag clicking is most commonly used for things like Breezley, Moonwalk, and Godbridge. The one important thing to remember about learning short drag clicking without holding your mouse is that it is a little bit easier for your mouse to slide along your table, which will definitely throw off your bridging. But for the sake of just learning how to do the method in the first place, we're not going to worry about that too much today. First things first, we need to understand where to drag on the mouse surface. To start off your drag click, you want to place your finger right beside where the mouse wheel is. This way you can glide your finger all the way to the edge of the mouse and reset really quickly. This makes it easier to do a lot of repetition, which is useful when you're trying to learn bridging methods in the future. Now that you know where to start your drag click, you're going to hang your finger a little above your mouse before you actually start clicking. And to begin your drag click, all you're doing is pressing down on your mouse firmly enough to apply a click, while you slide your finger across the surface all the way to the edge. And once your finger reaches the end of the mouse button, you can reset it back to beside the mouse wheel where you first started. It's important to note that when you're applying pressure to the mouse button, you don't want to drag click too lightly because then you won't register any clicks at all, and you also want to do your absolute best to avoid pressing down too hard because what will happen is you'll press down for a single click and then your finger will not release enough off the mouse button to allow it to get more clicks. The amount of pressure you have to apply depends on the mouse entirely, and it's very important when you're first learning to drag click to find the best amount of pressure to apply to get the most clicks. To do this, all you really have to do is play around with your mouse a little bit and eventually you'll start to see consistent CPS. Now everything you just learned really only applies to when you're drag clicking without holding your mouse. Of course, as I mentioned before, when you're not holding your mouse to drag click, it's more likely to slide across your desk surface. And quite a lot of people have asked me how they can prevent this. And to that, here's my best advice. If the reason you want to learn this is that you're falling off of your bridges, my best advice would be to lower your sensitivity in game. That way, when you move your mouse a little bit in real life, it doesn't affect the game as much. If you're genuinely not concerned about the game and really just want to learn how to keep the mouse still in real life, the best two options I can give for when you're first learning are to either put a weight against the edge of your mouse, that way when you drag click it forward, it doesn't slide at all, or you can flip your mouse pad upside down, that way you get a grippier surface for the bottom of the mouse and it won't slide at all. After a while, I can promise you, you really won't need to use these types of things anymore and you'll just be able to do it on your own. And now let's cover the other type of drag clicking, which is holding your mouse. Holding your mouse to drag click is also a very popular strategy and it can help you learn things like telebridging, MLG rush, block clutches, and more. And it's definitely a clicking method you should learn if you're trying to get into the more advanced side of Minecraft. In order to comfortably hold the mouse, you're going to place your thumb on the left side of the base of the mouse and your pinky and your ring finger on the right side. And this leaves you with your pointer finger and your middle finger to drag click with. Which finger you use to drag click doesn't really matter. Some people use both, one on the left side, one on the right side. Personally, I only use my pointer finger for both, but it really all comes down to preference. All you really need to do to find where you should start your drag click is run your finger along the mouse button until it begins to get a little easy to click. You don't want to start your drag click at the very back of the mouse button because it will be a lot harder to press down. And now that you know where you should be beginning your drag click, you're going to place your finger right there. And to begin the drag click, you're going to have to press down quite a bit harder than you would when you're not holding the mouse. And to get a long drag click, you want to move your wrist forward along with your finger. That way it's a little easier to keep the same pressure all the way through. Learning to long drag click definitely takes a lot more practice, but the hardest part about it is getting friction. And that's an easy solution. Some good ways to get more friction are to put a little bit of water on your finger before you drag click or put tape on the mouse button and then drag click. The great thing about the Comb Pro, however, is that it's a lot easier to get friction than with most mice such as the A70, and you'll probably never really need to use tape. But if you are really having trouble getting the friction, I do recommend electrical tape because it will help you get that friction and you'll be able to drag click way easier and you can take it off once you're confident. To get consistent at both of these different types of drag clicking, you're really just going to need to practice quite a lot. It took me quite a while to learn how to drag click and on 
honestly, I hope that these videos help you learn a little faster than I did. But with that being said, that is pretty much everything you're going to need to know to drag click with the Rocket Comb Pro. If you did end up enjoying the video, please do consider subscribing because it really does help out so, so much and it would be greatly appreciated. And with that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.